Hello and welcome to episode two in this Talking Flutes bite-sized happiness hypothesis podcast sandwiched between our longer Talking Flutes pods where we are briefly looking at the art of finding joy and fulfillment in our musical lives. This week we're going to take a look at mindfulness for musicians and how it can open the doors to our happiness. What is it? and how we can seamlessly include it into our life to transform us as musicians, performers, and also as human beings. Firstly, I must begin by saying that mindfulness is not some new age tree-hugging with the need to wear old baggy clothing and have a weird hairstyle vibe going on. It's been around for over 2,000 years, and in its essence, is very simple to do as you are right now, wearing what you do and playing how you do. Mindfulness, the practice of bringing one's attention to the present moment and engaging with the world around us in a non-judgmental way, can be particularly beneficial for flute players and musicians. In this brief pod, we will explore the various ways in which mindfulness can enhance our flute playing and overall well-being. First and foremost, mindfulness can help flute players to focus and avoid distractions. It has often been said that the flute is an easy instrument to play and a hard one to master, but at its root, we don't have a reed, a string, a bow or mouthpiece to blame if our sound is off. We simply blow over the edge of a piece of wood or metal and it's the airstream splitting which makes that initial sound. We are in effect, just like singers. And the problem with that is we have good days and bad days with our sounds. And if our tone and our sound is not as rich and not as pure as we'd like it to do, that little inner voice starts to invade our lives, our practice and our performance. And we find it very hard to engage in music to the depth and creative levels that we would want. Being a musician, as we all know, requires a great deal of concentration and discipline. We are not working spreadsheets, looking at data or legal documents, although there's nothing wrong with that. We are just very, very different. We are taking blobs on sticks, notated on a piece of paper and turning them into an audible narrative. This narrative has been composed in turn to tell a story and we as a musician are tasked in the role of storyteller. I'm sure that you'll agree that quietly reading a story to yourself is so much easier than reading it to an audience. And yet as musicians, we spend many, many hours rehearsing our voice and the storyline as determined by the composer so that we are ready to go on stage and put our voice out there to an audience or an examiner. But bearing in mind the amount of hours we've put into practice, How often is our focus taken away from that moment of performance when that little inner voice sits on your shoulder and goes, yadda, 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 yadda. In our musical life, I'm sure that each and every one of us has experienced the many ups and downs with our practice and performances, with our wandering mind usually the villain to us losing focus. When we are mindful, we are better able to pay attention to what we are doing in the present moment rather than letting our thoughts wander or getting caught up in external distractions. This can be especially important for musicians who often need to concentrate for long periods of time in order to practice, rehearse and perform. But thinking about it, how long are you actually able to focus without distraction? In addition to helping flute players to focus, mindfulness can also be beneficial for reducing anxiety and stress. Playing the flute or any musical instrument publicly can for some, and actually for many, be a nerve-wracking experience, particularly for those who experience performance anxiety. When we are mindful, we are able to let go of negative thoughts and emotions and instead focus on the present moment. This can assist musicians to feel more calm and confident in their playing and can be helpful for flute players who may experience this anxiety or other stresses related to their work. Furthermore, mindfulness can enhance flute playing by allowing players to be more present and engaged with their music. When we are being mindful, we are able to fully immerse ourselves in the experience of music making rather than being caught up in our own thoughts and distractions. 
This can help flute players like you to connect more deeply with your music and may even allow you to tap into your full creative potential. So let's be honest here. How many of us have been playing a piece of music only for our mind to let us know that the hard part is coming up, moving the focus away from the now to the future moment? As a result, those inner feelings start to make themselves known to us with perhaps a little nerves and off feelings in the stomach. The result, as we will know and have experienced, is that our focus is taken away from what we are playing at that moment. You see, if we focus on each note in each bar, then we can help free ourselves up from the worry of what is coming. There will always be hard parts in music. That's the nature of the beast. However, to let yourself be aware of them in advance when you're close to them will certainly affect your performance outcome. Saying that, how many times have we been worried about a hard part coming up and we've sailed through it only to go wrong in the easy bits following? Staying in the present moment will help us navigate this notational map that the composers put together and which the audience are waiting to hear. Stay in the present moment with what you are doing. Let the hard bars appear in your eye line when they should. And if you've done enough practice, and that's the key, if you've done enough practice, you'll sail through. Mindfulness can also have a number of positive effects on our physical health. The practice of it has been shown to improve our breathing and lung function, which is especially beneficial for flute players. Deep Slow and controlled breathing is essential for what we do as it helps to maintain a steady flow of air through the instrument. By practicing mindfulness, flute players can improve their breath control and, in turn, their overall flute playing. In addition to its physical benefits, mindfulness can also have a number of positive effects on our mental health. The practice of mindfulness has been shown to reduce stress and anxiety, improve sleep and increase feelings of happiness and well-being. And that's what we want, isn't it? We want to feel happy. Think of a time when you've actually felt happy. Was it when you were playing your instrument or was it in another area of your life? How often have you been happy when you've played? How often have you been happy when you've finished a concert? How often... Have people come up to you and said, really, really well done. I really enjoyed that. Only for your head to say, yeah, but didn't you hear those hard parts? I went wrong. You see, mindfulness increases our creativity by bringing our attention to the present moment and engaging with our surroundings in a non-judgmental way. By following this, we can open ourselves up to new ideas and perspectives without that little voice shouting in our ear. This really can be helpful for musicians who may feel stuck in a creative rut or who are seeking new inspiration for their music. So here's a question and then a simple little exercise to get you to be mindful. When we are going to play or practice, do you find yourself getting your instrument out automatically without thought? One moment it's in its case, the next you're warming up on it. So the next time you're going to take your instrument out of the case, first notice how the case feels. Open the case up and look at the instrument. Notice the colour of inside the case and the instrument lying there. How do the parts of the instrument feel to the touch? How much pressure do you need to exert to put the three parts of the flute together? After the instrument has been put together, how heavy does it feel? Have you ever noticed how heavy the flute is? Putting each finger down individually, notice how each key feels. And then bring the instrument up to your mouth and notice how cold or warm the lip plate is as it touches your lower lip. So if you don't have the inclination to look deeper into the wonderful world of mindfulness, then try making a habit of being mindful when you're getting your instrument out and also when you're cleaning it and putting it away as then you'll cut out inner noise and enable you for just those few precious moments to be peaceful. We're going to speak about mindful listening in a later talk in Flutes Bite Size. However, 
How much attention do we give the words that our teacher or accompanist offers? And I say accompanist because they often give wonderful words of wisdom when you're practicing and rehearsing with them. Do we accept what our teacher or accompanist says and understand every word they say, especially about the interpretation? Or are we simply guilty of just going through the motions? I mean, rarely do I ever see musicians ask a question during a masterclass on something that has just been said of them, something that has been required of them, something that has just been explained and demonstrated to them. If we were truly mindful of their words being imparted, then perhaps we would ask for clarity if we didn't completely understand all possible nuances. So think about it. Are you really paying attention to every word that is being said and the way it is being said to you? Because it is being said in a way to open up that piece of music in the way that the teacher, the player or the accompanist thinks will add value to your performance. Overall, the benefits of mindfulness for flute players are numerous. So the question I leave you with this week is, are you willing to begin to embrace mindfulness in your music making? And if so, how? Talking Flutes and Talking Flutes Extra are podcast productions by the Trevor James Flute Company. For more information, visit trevorjamesflutes.com.